I certainly do appreciate being invited here. Uh, I always enjoy this forum, and it's, it's a really good thing for us to be able to partner together to uh, bring information forward. One of the things that uh, we always enjoy doing is partnering around the campus. For instance, just last week, we, um, we met up with folks from Capital Projects and from facilities and from the city of Berkeley and the ASUC. And we um, did what is called the annual Fiat Lux Walk. We gathered together at nighttime and walked through the areas, pointing out areas that uh, need better lighting, need some changes in lighting, um, or where some of the landscape needs to be worked. And those kind of partnerships that are geared toward safety and feeling good about being on the Berkeley campus are always uh, things that we are eager to do with our community. So I know you have some questions. Um, why don't we jump right into those? Uh, the first one from Barry, uh, will the school be increasing security in light of recent robberies and hate crimes around the nation? We certainly are uh, deploying our existing resources in a thoughtful way. We have a particular unit that we call our special duty unit that is a sergeant and three officers and we move them into areas where uh, we have recent need of an increased presence. Uh, we've also increased our presence on Sproul Plaza during our heavily trafficked time periods. And uh, we're working with the city of Berkeley. Uh, with, regarding the recent robberies, there's uh, a program that's very simply called Robbery Suppression, where we pair up with the city of Berkeley on the heavy traffic nights of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And we're roaming in the areas where the robberies tend to occur. And, and that's the pedestrian pathways for the students off campus. So um, one of the things that uh, was commented on from Lindy was takeaways from the Northside safety video about cameras, about more lights, or, or fixing the lights that are broken or trim the barriers that block the lighting and police booths near the entrance of the campus, similar to Columbia University. Uh, regarding cameras, we have been uh, partnering around the campus with different, different departments, uh, particularly traffic, uh, excuse me, parking and transportation, where we've got uh, more cameras going into the newer parking lots. And uh, as we can make it happen, we're installing additional cameras around. Many of our clients on the campus, uh, the different academic buildings, are putting cameras exterior to the campus that are a big help to us uh, when we are looking and watching what's happening around the campus. So cameras are an important thing. In the Fiat Lux exercise that, that we went through last week, uh, we certainly identified where improved lighting needs to go in. Um, we identified the new Moffitt area that's going to get some additional lighting. We know the campus has changed out all of their bulbs to LEDs, so the, the lighting on the campus is much brighter. The city of Berkeley is, has got some uh, challenges because of their budget in, in their situation. I think they get about $100,000 a year to work on lighting. So they are slowly replacing bulbs that are out with LEDs to improve the lighting. They really can't um, install additional lighting, so they're going for better lighting, and that's why the LEDs are coming into place. Uh, we also, on the Fiat Lux, identified uh, shrubbery and trees that need to be trimmed back because they're blocking some of the light. So th this is all ongoing work. It never stops. Uh, it is the kind of thing that we are in partnership with Capital Projects and Facility Services to improve the environment or note those things that are broken so they can be addressed quickly. Regarding police booths near the entrance, you know, I doubt that um, that's going to be construction done anytime soon, but um, it could be a topic of conversation for us as we move into the future. I do know that, you know, lighting and cameras um, in particular aren't necessarily the, the thing that's going to solve cases or going to reduce crime on campus. Uh, just recently, we had a, a situation where Three armed robberies occurred within a 45-minute period. It was in a 10-block spread around the campus. 
And um, some people may wonder, well, why does it take so long for the cops to find somebody when there's been three robberies in a row? Uh, there's a lot of streets. There's a lot of streets around here to cover. And the patrol cars were moving uh, in, in those areas, swarming. The area is not exactly um, what you would do in that situation. You're mostly taking a, a grid approach and actually looking for them. And it was through coordination between UCPD and Berkeley Police Department that actually identified and caught the individuals in, involved in that robbery. And truly, when you have three in one night, you stand a better chance because they're still in the area versus one robbery and, and they're out and gone. So the whole process, I, I realize it could be kind of confusing, but we, we are working closely with the city of Berkeley to try and minimize the presence of these individuals on our campus. Laura wrote in a, a question of why are plainclothes police officers better to have around the streets near the campus than ones in uniform? You know, uh, I would agree with you, Laura, that it, it's better for us to have a presence, a very visible presence in the area. And so what you will see from us is high visibility, as many patrol cars or, or police officers on bicycles as we can put out there. Occasionally we'll do plain clothes work, um, but that, that is really to try and lure the individual into um, creating a crime versus trying to deter crime. A uniform presence is the best thing to have when we're trying to deter crime. Uh, do the police cover and patrol the area south of Bancroft around the housing and commons? Yes, we do. You know, our, our residence halls are not on the core campus proper. They're a couple of blocks off, but we do consider that part of our core campus. Our jurisdiction is actually one mile from the campus but our properties are all over, so we're traveling a lot as we're patrolling the area. Clark Kirk Campus is, is one of our regular beats. Um, all of the units that are a couple of blocks away from us, even the, um, the residences that are on the north side of campus, co-ops, co and, and the new rental residences that came out this year, this year are all part of the part University of California University. jurisdiction. Uh, we rely heavily on the city of Berkeley to be present with us, but actually I, I would say that differently. The, the city of Berkeley relies heavily on the university to be present in the city streets. And uh, again, mentioning our special duty unit, their role is to focus into the south side and into the north side so that our visibility is actually enhanced. Uh, Donna wrote in, the other night my daughter finished studying at 1.30 a.m. and had to wait 45 minutes for Bear Walk. Can't we somehow supply Bear Walk with golf carts to save them time to cover more students? Uh, and, and you would like to address the long wait times. At the beginning of the semester, we experienced um, a shortage of our CSOs. We always have CSOs that leave because they graduate. They're only allowed to work with us for like an additional six months after they graduate. And in the fall, we are always gearing up to hire. Um, if any of your students want a job, please tell them to call us because we would love to still increase the number of CSOs that we have. Uh, we just hired about 10 new ones. Uh, we normally carry about 45 to 50 students that are working for us. And we will have about four on duty at a time to do the, uh, the bear walks and at 11 o'clock, another four come on duty that focus on the res halls. Um, as far as supplying them with golf carts, I'd really rather not give them golf carts, um, mainly because this time of year, the weather is just so um, unpredictable and, and uh, golf carts aren't the best to put out in the pouring rain. We do have a fleet of three Priuses that are all marked uh, for our community service program. And we tell our students that when the long wait times appear to be coming in the evening to get in the cars so they can take multiple people at a time. Uh, we also give all of our CSOs bicycles to ride on so they can quickly get to the location and then walk the bike with the, with the person needing the escort. Suda uh, asked, why are there so many smoke shops so close to campus? Perfect question. Why are there so many smoke shops so close to campus? Um, are they legal? Yes, they are. 
Um, there's one right on Telegraph and Parker. We're, yeah, we're well aware of that. Um, the smoke shops are actually businesses in the city of Berkeley. They meet the city of Berkeley uh, rules and regulations for having a business. They're within the zoning regulations that the city of Berkeley has. Uh, there's really very little we can do about their presence, but certainly uh, pay attention to the kind of traffic that comes to their businesses. Lindy, uh, another question, why can't there be more cameras set up around parking lots where a great deal of crime ha appears to happen? Um, we do have cameras in a number of our lots, particularly our newer ones. We work closely with Seamus Wilmot, who is the director of parking and transportation, um, putting in cameras and putting in detection devices. I know that, that um, parking and transportation is just as concerned about security in the parking lots as we are. Um, we put up cameras as we can get technology into the area. Some of our parking lots are very old and they won't accommodate that kind of technology. Uh, we have picked up a different kind of technology, which is a cell phone that um, it has a program embedded in it. Um, we put it in a car, hoping somebody will break into the car and take the phone. And uh, we've actually had that phone stolen. When, when the person who stole it turns the phone on, it begins taking a series of pictures that um, are sent to us right away. Uh, we did have the car broken into once, and the individual, we got some great pictures from the, the individual who stole the phone. Um, before he was able to rip out the battery, and we made two good arrests out of that, which stopped a series of car break-ins in the area here. So cameras are important. Um, technology in particular is important that we're trying to use as frequently as possible. Leah asked, since almost all of the on-campus housing is actually off-campus, is any Cal housing under UCPD jurisdiction? Much like I, I answered earlier, all of the property belonging to the university is under the jurisdiction of UCPD. We have jurisdiction a mile off the campus. We are constantly patrolling those areas, both in the south side and the north side. And yes, all of our housing, including the co-ops that are on university property, are part of the university jurisdiction. The new Moffitt area, <clears throat> I'm talking about the Bear Walk services, the new Moffitt in the 24-hour zone, um, we are, are closely working with campus about the, about the new entrance and how the lighting is going to be worked in that entrance, and of course our Bear Walk services and the, uh, the parking and transportation night safety shuttle focus in that area. Uh, Susan asked a question, what kind of patrol are you doing around People's Park? My older child is a senior now and things have gotten worse. Um, certainly, <clears throat> People's Park is an area that we pay a lot of attention to. We go into it at, at nighttime and shut the park down, moving folks out. Uh, we work with the employee who is on People's Park during the daytime when it's open to provide support um, we realize that the park attracts problems. Um, unfortunately, right now, there's no plan on doing anything with People's Park other than letting it stay People's Park, but it is a constant topic of conversation amongst higher administrative individuals. Um, we are present, and because that's in the south side, our special duty unit focuses in that area. We do... Um, drug stings in that area where we'll buy drugs and arrest people. And we, it's just a constant presence that we have to have in that, in that particular area. And, and I will tell you with People's Park, um, we say this to our new students that come in, we recommend that they don't use it as a park and that they, they really um, try to stay away from People's Park as much as possible. Um, Mandy? has a question. It seems the suspects might be repeat offenders that are not caught. Can the PD perform some sort of sting operation? Um, again, undercover officers pretending to be a student having a cell phone. We do that on a regular basis. Um, we do know that repeat offenders are in our area. 
Um, it, and we, we typically will get stay away orders from those who are caught on the campus. Um, we're constantly working again with the city of Berkeley to identify those individuals and to take enforcement action against them. <clears throat> Carol asked, is the area around the fraternities and sororities patrol? Uh, yes, yes it is. And, and I will tell you how we go about doing that. The, um, at the beginning of every semester for about the first eight weeks, we pair up with the city of Berkeley. Because the fraternities and the sororities are in the city of Berkeley, not on the campus. We pair up with the city of Berkeley and we have a program that um, we, we actually internally call Party Patrol. What we are doing is going around uh, responding to noise complaints or going around to the fraternities that have parties that are going on, checking to make sure their, their, their parties are within their permits, and also checking for um, alcohol-related in incidences that might be developing in the fraternities or the sororities. But yes, we are present in those areas. And another thing that's good to note is that we are constantly listening to the city of Berkeley's uh, police radios. So whenever they get a dispatch call that is to an area that we know is a fraternity or sorority or a housing complex that our students tend to live in, we're arriving there oftentimes before the city of Berkeley does and we're very involved with them in resolving whatever issue has, has come to be. Uh, Laura has asked, why were there only one to two bear walkers per night for students until recently when crime on and around campus continues to be such a huge problem and has been for the last 30 years? Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we, we had a series of, of our CSOs that graduated. That's great news for them. Uh, what it means for us is that we have to constantly be recruiting and bringing people on board. Uh, we just recently hired a batch, and, and keep in mind that when we're bringing people on board, we actually take our time to make sure we're hiring the right person. Uh, we do backgrounds on all of our CSOs. They have to certainly go through the interview process, then we could do the backgrounds on them. And that's more than just fingerprints. We actually call their prior employers, we'll call where they may have lived, we're, we're checking out to see what kind of person is this. Then they go through a training program that they have to pass before we actually let them uh, loose. When they're out on the campus, they are walking with a police radio and with pepper spray if they've had the training. So they're, they're, they are highly skilled individuals that we bring on board to do this job of, of walking people from one point to the other. The follow-up question was, why is one or more of the bear walkers female when many of the campus assaults are sexual assaults against women? Well, to start with, um, I'm not allowed to not hire people because of their gender. That is something that uh, really is kind of not a good thing to do. Plus, the women who, who apply to us, they go through the same rigorous process of the interview and the background and the training. And frankly, um, they're pretty good. They are really good. And we have never, and, and I will knock on wood with this one, we have not had a CSO, which is our community service officers, they're the ones doing the bear walks, accosted while they're on duty. Uh, they often are eyes and ears around the campus. They're the ones telling us things that are happening. Uh, and they are also, part of their training is if they see something happening, they are not to engage with it, that they are instead to call us and let us deal with that particular problem. Is carrying pepper spray useful at all for defense, self-defense, and or the many personal alarms that, that have 120 decibels um, emitting from them? The answer to that is yes and yes, providing. Uh, pepper spray is a very, very useful tool, providing they've been trained in how to use it. Um, I was talking with someone earlier who received that training in the res halls when they were first in their um, career here at Cal, and they still have the pepper spray that we gave to them once they graduated the program. So pepper spray is, is a useful thing. Our CSOs are trained in the, with that. Our, our security guards are trained with pepper spray. We love to train the students that want to use pepper spray. We teach them how to use it. We teach them how not to use it. Um, the, and, and it is a useful tool that I would encourage anyone to use, providing they get the training. 
the many personal alarms um, are, are good to have. And again, it doesn't take a lot of training to use those. Anything that makes a lot of noise is going to be good to call attention to what's happening in the streets. Uh, the next question was, have we thought of turning the streets around campus into pedestrian areas at night, only accessible by car to people who live there? Um, they're, city, they're the city of Berkeley streets. And uh, I know there was some talk about turning Bancroft into a two-way street that I think we've been able to avoid thus far. Um, but as far as conversations about turning the entire street into pedestrian areas at night, I will bring that up to the city chief, uh, see what he thinks about it, and see if he can take that to the city council. Why can't the perimeter bus take a different route that stops closer to the Berkeley co-ops where many of the students reside on the north side? Um, this has been looked at on a couple of different occasions, and I know recently one of the ASUC members looked at it. They have determined that um, it's kind of hard to do that. To start with, the buses that the university has um, can't make the turns on the narrow streets that are in the north side. Uh, those streets are pretty regularly uh, traveled and, and they're not straight grid line streets. So a big bus can't do that. Plus, the smaller buses aren't as quiet and when used in the past, there were noise complaints from the residents in those areas. There have been um, different configurations that have been um, looked at. And the, the reality of it is, once we move one group into a privileged sort of, of service, another group falls out. And so it's very difficult to hit them all in, in getting them all on the stops. The biggest thing that stops us in the north side is the size of the buses and, and the cost of putting other buses on the ground. Do we offer self-defense classes to students? Yes. We work with um, other, other departments around the campus and as other student groups, and we put on what is called a RAD class, Rape Aggression Defense. It's geared for women. And uh, it teaches our, our female students, primarily that's the target that we go for, how to find that inner voice and that inner strength um, during moments of crisis. Uh, it's been a well-received program. We also um, got trained and certified and have put on a number of RAD Kids classes that are designed toward young people, you know, ages 12 and under to teach them how to get out of situations that are making them um, extremely um, perilous situation. So how would a student get the pepper spray training? Give me a call or send me an email. I'm going to give you my email at the end, and I will route you to our community service group that um, can work with putting a class together. Uh, that's a very good question. Yeah, we, we will work with the rest halls if we can get enough people inside the rest hall or hold a class on our own. But we have a number of police officers that are trained and certified to teach the, uh, teach the pepper spray protocols to individuals. So it looks like that we are coming to the end of our session. Um, certainly, I, I want to thank you for letting me talk. I want to encourage you to please reach out to me and, and uh, let me know questions that you may have. You know, one person just sent in a, a question of if we have resident professors who are living in the, the rest halls, why not police as well? That's a good question. And that's one that we can certainly talk with the residence hall individuals about. Um, I'd like for you to let me know if you have any questions or concerns. My email address is bennettm at berkeley.edu. That's B-E-N-N-E-T-T-M at berkeley.edu. Thank you for joining us tonight, and thanks to the Cal Parents Program for having me on this live session. I wish you a good weekend, and go Bears. <laughs>